All right, so get ready because today we're doing a deep dive. Ooh, deep dive. Yeah, a deep dive into the future with, get this. Okay. Leaked interview, Eric Schmidt. Oh, wow. Former Google CEO. Okay, gee. Dropping some serious knowledge bombs about where AI is heading. We're talking predictions. Okay. That'll make your head spin. I'm ready. Along with some, you know, controversial takes about Google oh. work ethic, yeah. the whole global AI race. This is going to be good. I mean, what makes this so compelling is that yeah. Schmidt's not just some, like, you know, tech pundit speculating, like, from the sidelines. Yeah. This is somebody who helped build, like, the digital world that we live in. Exactly. So his insights carry some serious weight. <laughs> That's why we got to break this down and figure yeah. out what it means for you. Yeah. Some of this is... Uh, straight out of science fiction. Oh, I love it. He claims we're on the verge of a massive societal shift, all thanks to three key advancements in AI. Okay. So first up, expanding context windows. Okay, so imagine like an AI that can hold an entire textbook, like in its short-term memory, Whoa. and actually understand how all the concepts connect. Okay. So that's what these expanding context windows are enabling. I mean, we're talking AI processing, not just text, but images, code, you know, even audio to really grasp like the nuances of information in ways we've never even thought of before. Wait, so you're telling me I could like feed an AI a research paper on, I don't know, quantum physics? Yeah. And it could actually understand it. Not only understand it, but potentially summarize, like, you know, the key findings, identify areas for future research. Wow. Maybe even generate new hypotheses. I mean, the ability to, like, process and connect this vast amount of data, yeah. I mean, that's going to be a game changer. That's, I mean, amazing and kind of terrifying all at the same time. Oh, for sure. What's the, uh, what's the second big shift he talks about? So the rise of, like, sophisticated AI agents. Okay. These are essentially AI programs that can learn apply knowledge, even like conduct their own experiments. Oh, wow. So think of it like like a digital scientist or researcher that can like work 24-7 analyzing data, testing theories, coming up with, you know, new solutions. So not just processing information, but actually using it to learn and solve problems. Exactly. Okay. And his third prediction. All right. Text to action functionality. This one is a bit more, you know, conceptual. Okay. But incredibly powerful. So Schmidt envisions a future where like anyone can simply just describe what they want to create oh wow and the ai will build it he even gave this example of like somebody commanding an ai to like create a TikTok competitor in seconds hold on that's insane imagine the disruption like if anybody can build complex digital products just by describing them right what happens to like entire industries yeah it's a really like thought-provoking scenario right I mean, while, like, the timeline might be debatable, yeah. the underlying concept is, like, worth considering. We're already seeing AI tools that can write code, design websites, even compose music. Like, text-to-action could, like, amplify those capabilities exponentially. Mind-blowing stuff, seriously. <laughs> yeah. But he brings up, you know, some sobering realities about this whole AI race, too. Oh, yeah. He talks about this growing gap between the leading AI companies and everyone else. Yeah. And... He attributes this mainly to just the sheer cost yeah. of training these advanced models. He's not exaggerating. We're talking like tens to hundreds of billions of dollars yeah. to develop and train the most powerful AI. And this means that only like a handful of companies right. with massive resources yeah. can even play the game. So it really does raise questions about like access, oh, sure. control, and who ultimately benefits from these advancements. Absolutely. But he even suggests that we might need like international partnerships just to secure enough energy Whoa. to power all this AI development. Yeah. That's how energy intensive this stuff is. It really underscores like the scale of the computational resources required. Right. And it also leads to another like crucial point, like the environmental impact of AI. As development accelerates, we gotta prioritize sustainability, right? right. And we gotta find ways to make this stuff more energy efficient. Okay, so we got AI that can learn, okay. build things on command, yeah. potentially reshape entire industries. Right. Yeah. And all this is happening amidst this global race for AI dominance. Yeah. So this brings us to one of Schmidt's, I think, most controversial statements. Okay, hit me. That Google prioritized work-life balance over winning in the AI race. Oh, this sparked a lot of debate online. Oh, yeah, because it challenges, like, a core belief in Silicon Valley. Right. That relentless work is the key to innovation. Exactly. So Schmidt argued that the, you know, the more relaxed culture at Google yeah. might have put them at a disadvantage compared to the 
intense work ethic of startups. Right. Specifically mentioning Elon Musk. Right. Yeah. His demanding leadership style. So he's basically saying Google got too comfortable and let these hungrier startups like eat their lunch. It's a bold claim. Yeah. And it raises some like interesting questions yeah. about the trade offs, you know, between yeah. company culture, employee well being. And like this drive for innovation, yeah. you know, does a relaxed environment stifle creativity? Right. Or, you know, does it actually foster long term sustainability? There's really no easy answer here. I mean, this whole conversation is making me rethink everything I thought I knew about work and technology. I know it's a lot. And it gets even wilder when he starts talking about AI changing the very nature of knowledge. It's true. Like what? Yeah. So he argues that these AI models are becoming so complex yeah. that they actually challenge our traditional understanding of what knowledge even is. Okay. He actually co-authored a book with Henry Kissinger and Daniel Huttenlocker where they explore this idea in depth and they use this really interesting analogy of teenagers. No one. So we know teenagers are human, but we don't always understand like no. their thinking processes. Right. They're complex sometimes unpredictable, and their logic can seem like totally alien to us. Yeah. And Schmidt suggests that AI might be heading in a similar direction. So we might be creating AI systems so advanced that we can't fully comprehend how they arrive at their conclusions. That's possible. That's fascinating and a little creepy. Right. It leads us to the realm of like black box AI. Oh, so, yeah. you know, imagine you're applying for a loan uh -huh. and an AI approves your application. Okay. You want to know why, right? Of course. <laughs> but the black box nature of these systems means the reasoning is often hidden. Okay. So this raises concerns about transparency and trust. So it's like being judged by like this mysterious all-knowing entity with no way to understand its logic. Kinda, yeah. So, I mean, what can we do about that? Well, Schmidt mentions the need for uh, adversarial AI. Okay. Essentially, AI systems designed to like probe the limits and yeah. vulnerabilities of other AI. Yeah. So it's like a constant game of AI on AI chess, mm. you know, trying to uncover the hidden knowledge and biases I'm within like, these systems. So AI battling other AI to yeah. understand the secrets of AI. Exactly. Okay, this is getting seriously meta. Yeah, this is where it starts to get really interesting. And speaking of AI's capabilities, he makes some pretty bold predictions about the future of coding. Oh yeah, he does. What does he say? So he believes we're about to see a massive boost in like programmer productivity thanks to all these new AI tools. Okay. But he also acknowledges that AI might eventually surpass human programmers altogether. Oh, wow. So should we all just like give up on learning to code then? It's a good question. Yeah, AI is going to write all the software. Right. But even if AI can like handle the more technical aspects of coding. Okay. Understanding the fundamentals of logic and problem solving and design. Yeah. That's going to become even more critical. Right. It's like understanding, you know, the blueprint, even if a robot is building the house. So it's not about being replaced by AI, but rather learning to work alongside it. Exactly. And this like shift in mindset, yeah. it applies not just to programmers, but right. countless other professions. Oh, for sure. AI is going to reshape the nature of work. Yeah. The key is to adapt, learn new skills, and find ways to really leverage AI's capabilities to our advantage. So much to think about, and we haven't even gotten to his thoughts on the global AI landscape right. and the potential impact on misinformation. A lot more to unpack. We'll dive into all that and more when we come back. Welcome back. This deep dive into Eric Schmidt's predictions has been wild. Yeah. We've talked about AI like rewriting the rules of work, yeah. blurring like the lines of knowledge, right. even fueling like whole new global power struggle. Oh, yeah. It's a lot to process. It is. But uh, before we wrap up, what does Schmidt think we can actually do about all this? Well, amidst all like the warnings and, you know, yeah. the potential pitfalls, he offers some glimmers of hope. And one key takeaway for me was his emphasis on collaboration, right? both in terms of like humans and AI working together, yeah. but also nations, like finding common ground on how to develop and deploy this technology responsibly. I'm really intrigued by this idea of humans and AI teaming up. Yeah, It feels yeah. so much more empowering than this whole robots taking over narrative. Right. But what would that actually look like? 
in practice? Like, imagine doctors using AI-powered diagnostic tools okay. to detect diseases earlier and more accurately. Yeah. Or architects, you know, designing sustainable cities with the help of AI okay. that can, like, analyze complex environmental data and optimize building design. Oh, wow. I mean, the possibilities are pretty much endless. So instead of fearing AI as this, like, threat. Right we should see it as a powerful tool exactly. that can amplify our abilities and help us solve some of humanity's biggest challenges. I think that's the like the key takeaway here, you know, yeah. it's like with any powerful tool it comes down to how we wield it. And that's where Schmidt's call for, you know, critical thinking yeah. and ethical awareness becomes so crucial. Yeah. We can't just blindly trust these systems, right? Right. We got to understand their limitations, recognize their potential for bias, yeah. and just be like really discerning consumers of all this AI generated information. It's like we need to develop like a whole new set of instincts for navigating this AI powered world. It's true. You know, we can't just passively accept whatever information is fed to us. Right. You to question it, analyze it, Thanks. think for ourselves. Exactly. And it's not just about like individual responsibility, right? Right. Schmidt also emphasizes the need for safeguards at like a societal level. Okay, so what's he talking about? So he talks about developing like ethical guidelines for AI development. Okay. Promoting like media literacy right. to help people identify misinformation yeah, yeah. and creating, you know, technological uh, solution to combat the spread of harmful content online. That sounds like a massive undertaking. And it is. I mean, do you think we're up to the challenge? I think we have to be. Yeah. I mean, the stakes are too high to ignore. Right. And it's not just the responsibility of like, governments and tech companies either. Right. So what can like the average person do? Eh, each of us has a role to play here. Okay. You know, we can support organizations working to ensure responsible AI development, okay. advocate for policies that promote transparency and accountability, yeah. or even just like, you know, start conversations with our friends and family about uh -huh. the impact of AI on our lives. It's a great point. It's easy to feel kind of overwhelmed. Oh, for sure. By like the scale of all this, you yeah. know, this technological shift. Yeah. But ultimately, the future of AI is shaped by the choices we make. I agree. Both individually and collectively. I think so. And, you know, w we can't forget about the environmental impact of all this. Right. I mean, he mentioned the immense energy demands oh, yeah. of training these AI models. How do we reconcile the need for technological progress right. with the need to, like, protect our planet? It's a critical question. And thankfully, there are some promising developments okay. in the field of like sustainable AI. Oh, that's good to hear. So researchers are exploring ways to make AI algorithms more energy efficient. Yeah. Companies are investing in renewable energy sources to power their data centers. Yeah. And there's this growing movement to actually develop AI systems that can help us address climate change. So while there are definitely risks and challenges right. associated with AI, mm -hmm. there's also this huge opportunity to use this technology for good. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's all about making conscious choices, right? Right. Steering AI development in a direction that, like, benefits both humanity and the planet. Well said. Mm -hmm. So Schmidt's predictions paint this vivid picture yeah. of both the transformative potential and the looming risks of AI. Totally. But ultimately, the future isn't predetermined, right? I agree. It's a future that we're creating right now. It's With every decision we make, every conversation we have, every action we take. Couldn't have said it better myself. So what's your final takeaway for our listeners? What's the one thing you want them to walk away with from this deep dive? Stay curious, stay informed, and stay engaged. The world of AI is constantly evolving. Yeah. And, you know, the more we understand about its capabilities and its limitations and its potential impact, yeah. the better equipped we'll be to navigate this, like, transformative era and shape a future where AI is actually a force for good. That's a great note to end on. Thanks for joining us on this journey of exploration. We hope this deep dive has sparked your curiosity and given you some food for thought. Remember, the future of AI is the future of humanity, and it's a future we create together. Welcome back. So this deep dive into Eric Schmidt's predictions, man, it's been a wild ride. It really has. AI rewriting the rules of work, blurring the lines of knowledge, mm -hmm. fueling like a whole new global power struggle. Oh, yeah. It's a lot to process. But before we wrap up, what does Schmidt think we can actually do about all this? Well, you know, amidst all the warnings of potential pitfalls, he does offer some like 
glimmers of hope. Okay. And one of the key takeaways for me yeah. was this um, his emphasis on collaboration. Okay. Both in terms of like humans and AI working together. Right. And nations finding, you know, common ground on how to develop and deploy this technology responsibly. I'm really intrigued by that, this idea of humans and AI teaming up. Yeah. It feels so much more empowering than like this whole robots taking over. Thing. Yeah, the apocalyptic scenario. Right. But what would that actually look like, you know, right. in practice? I mean, think about like doctors using AI powered diagnostic tools okay. to, you know, detect diseases earlier and more accurately. Yeah. Architects designing like sustainable cities with the help of AI okay. that can analyze this complex environmental data and optimize building designs. I mean, the possibilities are pretty much endless. So instead of like fearing AI as a threat, right. we should see it as a powerful tool. It is a tool. That can like amplify our abilities. Right. Help us solve some of these big challenges. Exactly. And it really comes down to, it's like with any tool, right? Yeah. How we wield it. Right. And that's where I think, you know, Schmidt's call for critical thinking and mm. ethical awareness is so important. We can't just blindly trust these systems. Right. We got to understand their limitations, recognize like their potential for bias and be discerning consumers of AI generated information. Yeah, it's like we need a whole new set of instincts, right? Yeah, definitely. Through this AI powered world. It's like a new literacy almost. We can't just passively accept what's fed to us. We got to question it. Right. Analyze it. Absolutely. Think for ourselves. And it's not just about individual responsibility either. Right. Okay, so what else? Well, Schmidt emphasizes the need for safeguards, like at a societal level. So what's he talking about? He talks about developing ethical guidelines for AI development, you know, promoting media literacy to help people identify misinformation, okay. creating technological solutions to combat the spread of this harmful content online. That sounds like a massive undertaking. It is, but I mean, you know, the stakes are so high. Yeah, right, it has to be done. We all have a role to play, right? Okay, so what can, like, the average person do? Well, we can support organizations working to ensure responsible AI development. Okay. Advocate for policies that, you know, promote transparency and accountability. Yeah. Or even just start conversations with our friends and family about the impact of AI on our lives. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. It's easy to feel overwhelmed by, like, the scale of all this. Oh, yeah. This technological shift. Definitely. But, I mean, ultimately, the future of AI is, like, shaped by our choices. I agree. Both individually and collectively. For sure. And we can't forget about the environmental impact. Right. You know, he mentioned these huge energy demands. Oh, yeah. It takes so much power to train these models. To train these AI models. Mm -hmm. So how do we balance, like, this need for technological progress yeah. with the need to protect our planet? Right. And thankfully, there are a lot of promising developments in, you know, sustainable AI. Oh, okay, that's good. Researchers are exploring ways to make AI algorithms more energy efficient. Hmm. Companies are investing in renewable energy sources to power their data centers. Uh -huh. And there's a growing movement to develop AI systems that can actually help us address climate change. Okay, so there are risks and challenges. Yeah. But there's also this, like, huge opportunity Absolutely. to use AI for good. It's all about making conscious choices and steering development in a direction that, you know, benefits both humanity and the planet. Well said. Yeah. You know, Schmidt's predictions really do paint this, like, vivid picture. I think so. Of both the transformative potential and the looming risks of AI. Uh -huh. But ultimately, the future isn't predetermined. We have agency. It's a future we are creating right now. Totally. With every decision, every conversation, every action. It's an exciting time. So what's your final takeaway for our listeners? What's the one thing you want them to walk away with from this deep dive? Stay curious, stay informed, and stay engaged. I mean, the world of AI is constantly evolving. Right. And the more we understand about its capabilities and limitations and its potential impact, the better equipped we'll be to navigate this transformative era and shape a future where AI is a force for good. Great note to end on. Thanks for joining us on this journey of exploration. You know, we hope this deep dive has sparked your curiosity and given you some food for thought. The future of AI is the future of humanity, and it's a future we create together.